talk to me about pre exercise fuel. What mm-hmm. do we need to be considering? What macros? Do we need to be thinking about electrolytes, protein, carbs? What does it look like? And mm-hmm. for the woman who needs to work out, and as I do, sometimes I don't like I have my kids have soccer practice. I only have like a certain window in the morning to get to get my my workout in. Sometimes it does feel heavy to eat prior to. So yeah. what do you say to that woman who's like, listen, the constraints of my life are such that I can only work out this time. So what do I do before? And if I don't like eating, what are my alter- what are the alternatives? Yep. I hear this all the time. And I get a lot of emails saying, what about the 5am club? What do we do? Why can't I work out fasted? So I, I bring it back down to when we look at female data and female research, we see that fasting, if we do a fasted workout, for the most part, when women are doing fasted training, it's either because they don't want to eat because it's so early, or they bought into the idea that if I do fasted training, I'm going to burn more fat during the session, and I'm going to end up eating less calories. So it's a calorie deficit. When we look at the data, this is not true. Yes, we'll burn more fat, but the repercussions of fasted training post-exercise So we have a perturbation in our appetite hormones. The hypothalamus is now going, hey, wait, there wasn't nutrition coming in for this session. So we, one, have a circadian shift. So we see that sleep gets delayed because we see circadian rhythm is reset, light and dark, and food. So if you're doing exercise without food, then we have a phase shift of when our melatonin is is released at night for good sleeping. But more acutely, we see that when you're doing fasted training with this appetite perturbation from the hypothalamus, that women tend to end up moving less during the day. So we don't fidget as much. We don't incidentally move as much. And we end up craving more simple carbohydrate and eating more of the simple carbohydrate. So it completely moots the point of women going, I want to burn more calories and burn more fat. Because now at rest, our body's craving more simple carbs and we're not moving as much. So it ends up not helping at all. We also see from Abby Smith Ryan's lab out of UNC that Mm -hmm. women, you know, Abby. Yeah, I just said women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So women who are going to be doing a a hit session and or strength session, if they have only 15 grams of protein before, it ends up fueling the workout better so they can hit intensities and have a better overall stress response, what we're after. And it also extends our EPOC, our excessive post-oxygen consumption, so elevated metabolism, and we end up using more free fatty acids at rest. So just by having that little bit of protein before about a 45-minute session, we are now appeasing the hypothalamus that there is some nutrition coming in. We don't have a perturbation in our appetite hormones and everything is elevated, and we end up using more free fatty acids at rest, craving less simple carbohydrates, and end up sleeping better. And it all feeds forward to just a little bit of nutrition before you work out. So when I get questions from the 5 a.m. club, I'm like, I'm right there with you. Like, I have to get up and get a session done because, you know, then I got to get my kid out the door, and then we have a long day of work, all that kind of stuff. So this is where the protein coffee comes in that I think went viral, And it doesn't even have to be that. It can be a couple of tablespoons of yogurt with a little bit of honey, be half a a banana. It could be a little bit of a protein drink, could be protein water. It's just as long as you're getting some food in before, maybe 150 calories at the most. So it's nothing that's going to make you overly full, but it is enough to bring your blood sugar up. It's enough to bring some circulation of glucose and amino acids so that the hypothalamus is like, sweet, we've got this. There's some nutrition, we can do this exercise, and I don't have to like start downturning my appetite hormones and start really trying to create a conservation effect by making the brain thinks it needs more glucose when it doesn't. I mean, I have a cappuccino, which is, and I have a high protein, like the, it's a fair life, you know, the brand is fair life, no yeah. affiliation, but you know, it has like 14 grams of protein for, I think it's a cup. And that's how much I use to make my cappuccino. And then I actually just, I have a question for you actually, because one of the things that I have found is I'll have a cappuccino, but then what I also do is I take some ketones. So I am someone who, when I'm working out early in the morning on the weekends, it's a different story, right? I've, I can get in a meal, maybe even two meals before I get to the gym 
gym and I'm fed and you know my joints are warmed up. It's a, be- it's a beautiful thing on the weekend, but during the week, yeah. like you, very you know the constraints of life are such that I can only get a workout in early in the morning. And I just interviewed Brianna Stubbs at the Buck Institute, and she's looking at ketones. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about ke- and I was telling her sometimes I'll take it like if I can't stomach like proats, if I can't have the protein and the oats in the morning, or it's too early or whatever, I'll have my cappuccino and then I'll have ketones. And so she was talking about this idea that ketones seem to help with muscle retention and they are anti-catabolic. So again, for a perimenopausal woman, this is one of your number one goals is to preserve the muscle that you have, ideally add to it, preserve the strength that you have, ideally add to it as you, as you're aging powerfully. What do you think about ketones? Have you looked at that? Is there any difference? And I asked her about female metabolism. She's like, great question. We don't have, we don't have the data. We don't have the data on that. Right. Right. Yeah. So when I look at ketones from a supplemental standpoint, we see that it's used as, as fuel. So you can look at it as it's, it's used as fuel, just like amino acids. So it could be protein, water, or ketones. Ketones are preferentially used, again, by the brain for delaying fatigue. So for looking at using it, it is just reducing the overall catabolic stress that occurs during exercise. So this is why we see the feed forward of better muscle function, because we're having support for central nervous system. We're also having support for metabolism. So if you're doing protein and then your ketone stirring, ketones are, are great, especially if you're not doing long, slow stuff or high, high intensity metabolic work. So the strength work and however however yeah. hard that is, is supported through the use of the, the exogenous ketones. Fantastic. And then post-workout, is there, do you feel like there's a certain, I know that the, the anabolic window, if, as long as you're, my understanding anyway, is as long as you're getting enough protein and carbohydrates in a 24-hour period, that, you know, the fabled, you know, 15 minute window after you work out is not really, is not really valid. Do you have, do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that? What are your thoughts on post exercise fueling? So from a protein standpoint, I agree with it, right? We can see that we, as long as we get enough protein throughout the day, then we're going to stay in the anabolic situation. The caveat is when we're looking at coming back down to baseline from a euglycemic standpoint or, you know, our blood glucose coming back down to baseline. We see that women's baseline response comes back down within 60 to 80 minutes. And so we have a smaller window to be able to repair and replace our carbohydrate and effectively our glycogen. And what helps with the carbohydrate uptake is protein. Mm -hmm. So if we're able to have an eating opportunity post-exercise, with protein and carbohydrate, not only are we refueling and repairing our muscle, we are also reducing the incidence of low energy availability because women tend not to eat enough. And so if we use post-exercise as a really fantastic eating opportunity, and it doesn't have to be a full meal, if you're getting your protein carbohydrate combination, you know, maybe it's just your protein shake because you're not that hungry, It opens up the ability to reduce any kind of risk for low energy availability, which is something we don't want to get into. And it also shuts down that catabolic response because a lot of women will delay food intake because they don't feel that hungry. And yes, we aren't necessarily compromising muscle protein synthesis, but we are exacerbating catabolism. We're exacerbating the muscle breakdown. Breakdown, yes. Yeah, And so when I get into arguments with some of the people on social media, when they're like, there's no sex difference in post-exercise, there's no window of opportunity. It's like, if you're looking just at muscle protein synthesis, I'll agree with you. We look at the holistic aspect of what's happening in a woman's body. I disagree. And this is the research that backs up that disagreement. 